For today's video, we will be talking about limits. A limit is the y value as you approach an x value. We'll get more into it when we draw the graph. To find a limit, there's technically four ways. Our first rule to find the limit is to plug it in. So whatever that limit is going to, as x approaches a number, we plug that in for x or any variable that it is. Now, if we have this problem, it says limit when x go. The limit is when x goes to six. And so for this, all we can do is that it looks simple. We could just plug in six for x plus nine on the top. And then we can say on the bottom, I was x, so six plus five. All we do is just plug it in. And so for this, on the top, we would get 15 over 11. And this can't be simplified. And so this is our answer for this problem. So when the limit, when x goes to six, the limit, the y value would be 15 over 11. This so next example, we see that the limit as x approaches negative one would be the y value. So for this, it looks like a pretty simple example. And so we would just, all we do is just plug in 10, uh, x for negative one. Okay, and then just plus three. And so this will give us negative 10 plus three, and which will just give us negative seven. So at the limit, as x approaches negative one, the y value would be negative seven. So the next thing that we will be talking about is multiplying by its conjugate. And this is when we have a square root or when something is over zero. So for this example, if we have this problem and we had done the same things we did last time as limit as x goes to 69. So if we had plugged in this into uh, 69, x for 69, and we minus 9. So on the top, we would get 0. On the bottom, we would have... 81 and that's 9 so 0 over 9 minus 9 which is just 0 over 0 and this is actually um, we cannot have this it is not it's not 0 okay and it is not equal to 0 we can't have this so we have to try something else to get our answer so we have to go back and this is where we have to multiply by the conjugate so let's keep the top portion so x minus 69 Actually, no. Uh, let's just multiply by its conjugate. And so for the bottom, we just use wherever the square root is at. So we just multiply top and bottom by x plus 12 plus 9. Okay, also on the top, so x plus 12 plus 9. So instead of minus 9, well, we multiply by the conjugate. So the opposite of subtraction is addition. So when we do this on the top, Let's not multiply it. Let's not foil out. Let's just keep it because we will. Every time you multiply by the conjugate, something has to cancel out. So this is the top. So let's write the limit as x goes to sixty-nine, and then on the bottom, we actually have uh, we we should foil on the bottom. And so a shortcut for this is when we multiply a square with the square root. It just becomes square root. The square root just goes away. So we have this. And actually now all we do is negative 9 times 9, which is negative 81. If we add these two together on the bottom. Let's write the numerator still. X plus 12 and then plus 9. All over x minus 69 and so we see that these two can cancel and so our answer we're not done yet actually but so far we would have this x plus 12 plus 9 is all we have so far now we have to limit as x equals to 69. So now all we do is just plug in x for 69. So this would equal 69 plus 12 plus 9. Underneath is 81 plus 9. And we have, let's bring it down here.
9 plus 9 is equal to 18, and 18 is our answer. So as we approach 69 on the x-axis, our y value would be 80, 18. Let's move on. Let's see if we have this problem. And so same thing for this problem. If we had plugged in as h goes to 0, uh, this plus sign over here just means from the right side. Um, that's if we're looking at a graph. But if we had plug in 0, we would get, um, actually, if you even look at the bottom, not even the top, we get 0, and we get something that's undefined. And we cannot have something equal to undefined. So nothing can have be equal to undefined. If it does, we must do another way to solve it. And in this case, we see a square root. All we do is just multiply by the conjugate. So for this, we can just multiply it by the top portion, because that's where the square root is at. h squared plus 4h plus 5 plus square root of 5. Also in the multiply the bottom part as well, same thing h squared plus 4h plus 5 plus square root of 5. Now all we do is just multiply it. The top, always multiply where the square root is at. So it's square root times the square root will just give us our original problem. h squared plus 4h plus 5. Now Radical 5 times radical 5, that would just give us radical 25, which is just 5. Since it's negative over here, it would be negative 5. All over underneath the bottom portion, which is h, square root of h squared plus 4h plus 5 plus uh, square root of 5. Now we can, all we can do now from here is just simplify, simplify the bottom portion. 5 minus 5 is a 0, so we, on the top we have h, h squared plus 4h all over h, h squared plus 4h plus 5 plus square root of 5. Oops, let me erase that. Okay. All from here now we could do is take out of h from the top. And that will give us h plus 4. Let's rewrite the bottom here. So now we would have h, over h plus 4 all over h square root of h square plus 4h plus 5 plus square root of 5. And so from now, from here, we can cancel out the h. And that means that we have as a whole at h equals 0. Whole. That's on a graph. Okay, let's not worry about that. We are left with h plus 4 We have this so far. Now from here, now we have got rid of, of the h's. All we can do from here is actually now finally plug in our h as 0. So wherever we see h, plug in 0 as that is that that's where the limit shall be going. So this is equal to 0 plus 4. On the bottom portion, we have Zero square plus four O plus five and plus square root of five. Simplify from here from the bottom portion, we would have four all over five, five, and also the other five. So square root of 5 plus the square root of 5, this is equal to 4 square root of 10. From here, we can actually simplify even more. The square root of 10 is just 2 radical 5. From here, we can simplify the 2s. These cancel, and this turns into a 2. And so our final answer would be 2 square root of 5. 
And this is our answer for this problem. Now moving on to our third rule. If first plugging it in does not work, nor does multiplying by the conjugate, our third rule is to factor. So factoring would be our third rule to solve these limits. So then for this problem, our next problem, we have the limit as x is going to 5. If we plug in x for 5 for the bottom portion, 5 minus 5 is just 0, and anything under 0 is undefined. And so we cannot have that. We must do another way, our third way, which is factoring. So we can factor the top by having x minus 5 over x plus 2. And our bottom function is just x minus 5. We see that they can cancel on the top, x minus 5. And now we are left with x plus 2. From this, we can plug in our limit value as x is going to 5. All we do is just plug in x for 5. And so we would get x 5 plus 2, which will give us our answer which is 7. Our fourth rule is dividing by the highest power. So if our first rule, plugging it in, does not work, nor does multiply by the conjugate, our second rule, our third rule by factoring, our fourth rule is by dividing by the highest power. By the highest power, we mean by like x squared, x cubed, x to the fifth. So these are the powers, right? So the highest gets divided by in the equation. Now, if we have this problem, as our limit is x going to infinity, we cannot plug in infinity to x for x. In this case, we have to actually use our fourth rule, which is divide by the highest uh, power. In this case, we see that there's an x squared, and so this is our highest power. So we could just divide it by like this, 1 over x squared and 1 over x squared for the numerator numerator and denominator and so for this we would get a problem we could just do 3x to the x squared plus 7 to the x squared so on the bottom we would have x squared 2 over uh, uh, over x squared minus 2 over x squared so everything over the x squared and so if now we bring in our limit right this would automatically go to zero this will go to zero. Anyways, this will go to zero as well. This will cancel out and become one over one. So in this case, we would have the top as zero over one. And so this would equal zero. And so zero is our limit in this case. So as x approach infinity, our y value would approach zero, would be zero. For this problem, we see that the limit as x approaches infinity we see that this equation has the highest power. We see that they both have in the numerator and the denominator. We have an x to the fourth, x to the fourth, and we also have x to the fourth in the bottom. So in this case, we divide x to the fourth everything. So you can just do 1 over x to the fourth over, you can do x to the fourth. And so this will give us um, everything should be divided by x to the fourth. Stupid. So 9x fourth divided by x to the fourth plus x over x to the fourth all over 2x fourth over x over 4 plus 5x squared over x to the fourth minus x to the fourth and plus For this, all we know now is that when our limit comes, this in turns into zero. Actually, no, this not into zero. This turns into zero. This turns into zero. Anything that that has the bottom power bigger than the top power that turns into zero, such as this as well, and this as well, because the bottom is bigger than the top. So we have zeros for uh, four zeros. These cancel out, we're left with 9 over here, and these cancel out, and we're left with 2 on the bottom. So we have 9 over 2, and we cannot simplify this anymore, and so this is our answer for this problem.
Now, what if we have this problem? As we can see, we don't plug in infinity because that is not how to do this problem. And so for this problem, we actually can from the bottom and from the top take out an x. So then on the top, we would have 1 over 2x. So we didn't really divide by anything, but we just took out an x from the top. And from the bottom, we can also take out an x since, that, since it's under the square root. So this will just be left with 9. Now plus what the one uh, x square. From here we can say that this goes to zero. This can go to zero as well. We also see that the x is cancel, and so we are left with one over square root of nine, and this is equal to one third. So our answer for this problem is one third, as the limit as x approach to positive infinity, the y value will be 1 over 3, 1 third. For our last problem here, we have the limit as x approaches 7. For this, if we do plug it in, we just get 7 minus 7, which will be 0. Anything under 0 is undefined, and we cannot have that as an answer. So we can't plug it in. That's our first rule. Our second rule, we cannot multiply by the conjugate because there is no square root and we cannot our third rule is that we can't factor for this we can factor actually as we can do this and then you can just foil but the only way to have for this to happen is if x is approaching to or any any variable is approaching to infinity that's when we can do it but in this case x is approaching to seven so there's no factoring or foiling and our fourth rule is that we can't divide by the highest exponent power because for this we see that there's both a combination to the root to the second power so we can't do any of that what we can do is look at 7 and pick a number greater than 7 so we have 7.1 let's plug in 7.1 minus 7 this will give us something as 0.1 square root of 2 over so will give us let's bring the 4 and then 0 0.1 square so uh, even if we do most uh, take the square of it it's still going to be a small number so anything the numerator is bigger than the denominator so this means that this is approaching to infinity anytime this happens we have this approaching to infinity. So our answer is infinity for this problem. This is because everything else has has uh, failed as a rule. And so this is our only explanation for this.